just to be crystal clear, the indictment that came down today, you're saying you're completely innocent of those? Um, not completely innocent would be a, a, a false statement. I What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Vince and today we are back with another reaction. So they were right to this YouTuber's video got him five years in prison. <laughs> That's like me telling y'all or posting I'm a thug. Oh, I got guns on me boy. Come find out. That's like me doing that. So we finna see what this dude did. Omni in, uh, let's see. YouTuber Omni in the Hellcat. Omni in the Hellcat. Let's Hellcat see. uploaded his first video titled Payday at Reloaded Construction. The vlog ends with a very deep message. Always remember, live life the way you will want to live it. What are you talking about? You want to get one chance at this, one shot at life. Bro, what one are you chance, about? one shot, that's it. I feel like I've seen Any this mistake before. That you make, it's done. You're done. Little did Omi know, starting this YouTube channel could have been the one mistake that would ultimately land him in federal prison. That what? very first video that Omi posted got 60,000 views in the first three days. The video shows Omar stepping out of his mansion, walking down his long driveway Dang. with more than 15 all-white cars parked in it, and telling- oh, why, why, why does he even have all those? This boy just got cars to have cars! ...the viewers about his entrepreneurial endeavors. From there, he drives to his first nightclub that he owns, where they are doing renovations. Then he goes to his second nightclub, where they just made the final touches before opening. Omi continued to post vlogs oh, nah. that started with motivational messages about life. You have one thing, an advantage over a lot of people. You're free, you're young, and you're healthy. No excuses. Stop trying to keep up with everybody. Stop going out buying Balenciaga. Typically, the middle of his videos that makes would sense. be That seemed like good motivation. But this dude is literally living GTA in real life. Grant that 505. For no, like... I mean, I mean, he said he live how you want to live. That's what he said in the beginning, and this is how you want to live. So, Leading to his businesses, can't be mad at him. Buying expensive clothes, jewelry, new cars, vintage cars, tour buses, and even houses. For a but wildly really successful man, money. he was relatable, down to earth, and kind. Far from the narcissistic rich assholes we typically see on the internet. Within two months, he reached 100,000 subscribers. By the end of in summer 2019, months? he had 300,000 subscribers. Dang. But every time he was asked about how he obtained his wealth, his answers were extremely vague. What do I do for a living? He's a Started scammer. As an He's app a developer. scammer. Started um, as an app developer. By the way, drink water. But as Omi spent <laughs> more time showcasing his lifestyle on the internet and being more open about how he made his money, he caught the attention of the FBI. And on November 20th, 2019, just six months after his first video, they raided his home. And took this everything, case file what the shows heck? 88 lines of personal property that the federal government seized from Omi. Over the next couple of months, the FBI confiscated $5,875,000, 58 vehicles, including a 2020 Lamborghini Huracan, a 2019 Lamborghini Aventador, and a 2019 Audi A7. They also took 21 properties, including buildings in downtown Philadelphia and mansions in the suburbs. You would think that in a situation as serious as he's this- He's scamming! Wow. He's scamming! He's a scammer! Scam, scam, scam! That's what he's doing! That's what he's doing, bro! Look, like, bro, it's no way, it's no way, bro. I don't care, I don't care what he's talking about, bro. If it's not scamming, bro, about the end of this video, slap me right now. Wow. Oh. Quiet. But as soon as this happened, he went live on YouTube to tell his fans about the raid. At first, he thought the feds were after him for tax evasion, which was partially true. And Omi claimed that he was innocent. But it wasn't just taxes that the feds were worried about. Bro, when I tell you they took everything, they took every SD card, every camera, um, every television in my house. Houses, IPTV is a gray area. You know, the copyright acts hasn't been hasn't been updated since the 1960s what's he talking about and you know i hit i hit a gray area and exploited it and they just didn't like it omi thought he had found a loophole in the u.s copyright law and was exploiting it now if at this point you're feeling extremely confused as to how this guy even got into this situation in the first place yeah this is exactly how his hundreds of thousands of fans felt 
Ironically, once the feds raided him, that's when Omi started opening up about exactly how he made his fortune. But why, first, why would he do that? Sponsor. That's what you that, that's, like. You're just supposed to mind your business, not mind your business, but keep your own stuff awesome, personal. Whose real name is Bill Omar Carasquillo, operated a large scale internet protocol television, or IPTV, piracy scheme in which they fraudulently obtained cable television accounts and then resold copyrighted content to thousands of their own subscribers oh. who could then stream or playback content. This piracy oh, scheme all started on Cody. Cody is essentially just a media player that's available on any device. They finna get me. They finna get me, y'all. I've been on this app. I've been on this app. I've been on I, I, it's, on the fire use stick. Cody to watch videos, I podcasts, movies, play games, <laughs> listen to music, I've watched etc. It. However, Cody doesn't make its own uh, content. I'm joking. It's an open source streaming platform that anyone can make apps on. Because of this, it's mostly known for people who watch pirated or stolen content. Most people used Kodi on Amazon Fire Sticks. Yeah, that's what they, they would said. go on the Kodi app, install all their favorite networks, and stream content for free. But it's not that easy. A lot of these add-ons can be riddled with malware or just end up being bogus apps that don't work or stream low-quality content, which leads to people googling things like best Kodi add-ons for free and searching through blogs to find out what apps are the most trusted like The Crew or Daddy Live. Not only does researching and installing these apps take a little bit of technical skill, it also is just a lot of work. Around 2016, Omi was exposed to this and saw a huge opportunity. Omi would buy Amazon Fire Sticks for $40, jailbreak them, or install all the best and most trusted apps onto Kodi, then resell them for about $120 to $150 That's a great to his turnaround. customers. Essentially giving customers cable TV for a one-time fee. The reason we know this is because he had no problem telling people his scheme. And back when Kodi was popping, you know what I'm saying? I was one of the first ones doing Kodi Sticks, and that's how I started making a lot of money buying these boxes from Amazon already preloaded and just reselling them for more money. I'll buy them for $50, sell them for $120, $150. Now I was selling thousands of fire sticks. I'm talking about a lot of fire sticks. In 2016, Omi said that he made $1 million flipping fire sticks. Oh my god! That gave him enough money to fund his next piracy venture, which would make him tens of millions of dollars. Talk to me. By this point, Omar was kind of a regular in the online piracy community, which is surprisingly large. I was a negative person in Cody because I was like a wrestler. There was good guys and there were bad guys. I was the bad guy because that's how I got people's attention. He was known by the username what? Target in 1080p. His YouTube channel was originally named Target in 1080p and featured videos of him discussing things in the IPTV space. One particular man named Dexter took a liking to him. Dexter uh, was a developer and Omi was the financial backbone. Dexter is clearly Together, they made a scammer. An app for Cody called Gears TV which was inspired by his favorite video game, Gears, Gears of War. War. Gears TV was Omi's all-in-one digital content package with some of your favorite shows like Game of Thrones, Better Call Saul, Twin Peaks, all Dang. of the major networks like ABC, ESPN, and Fox, channels that are only shown in the UK and Canada, and even more premium packages like NFL Sunday Ticket. Gears TV provided all of that content in 1080p resolution. I'm still kind of confused, I'm not gonna lie. Per month. Oh, if someone were to mind. pay for regular cable, it could cost them anywhere from 60 to 200 dollars per month <clears throat> how was he able to do this essentially what omi did was purchase cable subscriptions from comcast spectrum verizon direct tv and frontier communications these cable subscriptions come with a box that contains encrypted media omi purchased decoders from china to remove the encryption then capture cards to download the content and send it to a server where it would be redistributed over the internet to his subscribers what the heck? gears tv was cheap and provided way more value and content than any cable company could ever compete with. And word spreads fast in the IPTV community. Omi went from making $5,000 per week to $400,000 per week in just what? a few months. The indictment claims that in total- 400,000 a week, let me do math. 400,000 a week, 400,000. Hold on. Okay, so that's four zero 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 uh, times seven. Bruh, that boy was making almost three million a week. What? Three million? Oh my gosh. The defendants received more than $30 million in subscriber fees. Omi said he was still living in the hood of Philly at this point, and nobody knew the kind of money he was raking in. 
His first purchase was a 2016 Camaro SS 50th edition, his dream car. Keep in mind, Gears TV That's my was dream no car small too. operation. They had large servers, customer service representatives, and the government did have their eye on these schemes. As it got more popular, the monthly price increased, which pissed off customers as their $15 per month turned into $20, then $30, then $40, getting closer and closer to regular cable prices. Omi sold his app to a private investment company in 2018 for a whopping $40 million dollars. Oh, this was I perhaps been out. his most genius move. I would have been not out. Not too long after Gears TV shut down, oh. but it did not stop there. Omi used his large payout and expertise to build a new and improved app called Reloaded TV. This was everything Gears was and more, with a way better interface and higher quality content. Reloaded very quickly became one of the biggest apps in the IPTV space because of, of its stuff. great user interface and reliability. It's unclear what exactly happened to Reloaded TV. It seems like it wasn't around for very long because in 2019, Omar abandoned the Target in 1080p name and changed it to Omi in a Hellcat. And he stopped talking about the IPTV space as a whole. He claims he knew the industry was dying and the feds were cracking down on other apps similar to Reloaded. Right. So now, is it possible jail? that Omi's YouTube channel alerted the FBI? Not necessarily, but it didn't help his case. Anyone who is in the business of distributing media knows there are others trying to steal it, but Omi's YouTube channel promoting his own brand and attaching a face to the scheme just made it that much easier to identify the perpetrator. Uh... Bragging and flaunting his wealth could have pissed off authorities, and yeah, they are human. Maybe they did want to put him in his place a little bit. Maybe they were harsher on him than others to make an example out of him. In one vlog, Omi found out that federal agents boarded his flight to the Dominican Republic to make sure he wasn't trying to flee the country. But you have to remember that all of the information Wait, I just gave right clicked there, agent? In one vlog, Omi found Him? <laughs> he looked like an agent. We got him, boys found out that federal agents boarded his flight to the Dominican Republic to make sure he wasn't trying to flee the country. But you have to remember that all of the information I just gave you, his audience didn't know about. They had no idea why the FBI was after him. They just knew Omi had to restart his life. Please continue to support this channel. I'm gonna stay strong. I'm gonna try to beat this shit. They broke me. They broke one of the strongest people I know, which is me. They broke what? me, but no one got me to this position only but me. Start taking responsibility for your actions. Start Omi's YouTube channel after the raid became dedicated to him trying to regain his wealth, start new businesses, buy more cars, all while the feds were watching him. He started a printing company slash merch brand under the name Reloaded, where he made and sold all different types of clothing out of a room in his house. Keep in mind he had his construction business and various other side hustles that kept him paid. Plus it's not like the feds emptied his bank accounts entirely. How did they Omi know kept saying about he was all broke, but his version of broke is going from tens of millions to maybe just a few millions. But it wouldn't be long before the FBI came back. The whole FBI situation, it seems like they're trying to tack on money laundering charges, tax evasion charges. From 2016 to 2018, when Omi made tens of millions of dollars, he admits that he did not pay his taxes. However, he had a reason. He claims that the accountant he hired told him that she was CPA certified when she wasn't, and that she never paid his taxes the right way, but he was That's more than willing convenient. to pay the millions he owed. However, once he finally got together the money to pay his taxes, it was stolen from him. He posted a video titled, I no, Got Robbed he, for no, Dollars, in which he claims that he took $920,000 out of the bank in cash to give to his accountant. He left for Dallas for two Why days he and do, he was not gone. Even, so, that don't even sound smart. That really don't even sound smart. He took out $900,000 in cash. Does that sound smart to y'all? Where is he gonna put all that money, first of all? And do they, the banks even do that? I ain't never even seen, I ain't never even seen $10,000 cash. Someone cut the power off from his house and stole the cash, some electronics, and his girlfriend's purses. The funny part is, a lot of his own fans were suspicious. It seemed like Omi was trying to stash a million dollars and throw off the feds by setting up a robbery. Sorry IRS, I can't pay my taxes because somebody stole my money and here's my YouTube video mm. to prove it. Plus you have to think, why would anyone bother stealing Xboxes and TVs when you have a million dollars cash? Exactly. Conveniently, this video was posted on the same day that Omi released his very first sneaker, the Omi Zeros. 
which was just a Nike hey, Jordan nice. silhouette that replaced the swoosh with a lightning bolt. Oh. He even took the Air Jordan branding and replaced it with Air Omen. I've seen now, those. taking I know the Nike silhouette for a shoe brand what isn't something heck? new. It was a really hot trend for the past few years. Those are popular. I even bought myself a pair. Omi would slap the word reloaded on a popular team's logo or really any iconic brand trade dress. It's pretty clear that Omi's specialty is copyright infringement. Those Building an original tough. brand is way too much work and too risky. However, things got really bad for Omi in September of 2021 when he was formally indicted with criminal copyright infringement, wire fraud, money laundering, and several other crimes. Oh my the feds came back once again and raided his house for the second time. This time, he made much bigger headlines and was even interviewed on the news. Just to be crystal clear, the indictment that came down today you're saying you're completely innocent of those? Um, not completely innocent would be a, a, a false statement. Now, ignorance is no excuse for the law. Again, you'd imagine someone would be quiet during this instance. Yeah, bro, or at the very least, talk. have their lawyer speak for them. But Omi was still convinced that he exploited the system. Omi's whole life at this point was dedicated to fighting this case. He barely uploaded YouTube videos, maybe once a month. And when he did, you could just tell this man's spirit was broken. But after months of deliberation from his legal counsel, Omi pleaded guilty in February of 2022. Oh, I'm letting you guys know that I'm pleading guilty. Um, long talks with my attorney, and um, it's the best option, you know. Ignorance is no excuse, like I've always said. He's gonna keep saying that, he's gonna stick to it. It's about, you know, accepting responsibility. Now, he was going to serve some time in prison. Three U.S. government attorneys years? say that Omar, a.k.a. Omi and a Hellcat, should serve 15 years and 8 months in prison for crimes related to his pirate IPTV service, Gears TV. So he spent all of his time grinding to get his business affairs in order so his family can survive while he is away. But on March uh, that's, 7th, that's 2023, Omi finally met his fate. United States District Court for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania, Judge Harvey Bartle III, acknowledged ah, that the advisory ah, document- Ah, he didn't get a good roll of the dice. He didn't get a good roll of the dice. Pennsylvania, Look. Judge Harvey Bartle- Yeah, yeah, bro. He didn't, get, he didn't get lucky with the judges. This judge got bullied in high school, bro. He's, he's coming back for revenge. He got bullied by people like Omi. So, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Goes full circle, karma came back. But I'm just saying, he didn't get a good roll with the dice, with the judges. Look at him. If you see anybody with that mustache, run. The third acknowledged that the advisory guidelines of 24 years would be highly unusual for a copyright matter, and therefore decided that 66 months would be enough to punish Omar and send a deterrent message to any of his followers months? considering the same type of behavior. On top of the five and a half they years made an in prison, out of him. Omar got five years of supervised release. He had to forfeit $30 million worth of assets, oh. which was mostly vehicles and properties. And he had to pay more than $16 million oh in restitution, gosh. $10 million to the cable companies oh and gosh. $5 million to the IRS. Oh my surprisingly, Omi was happy with this outcome. He could have gave me 15 years if he wanted to. Oh, he didn't do he no really jail could've. time. He really could have. He could have gave me 15 years and I guess no one would have questioned him on it. And to the fact that he gave me another chance with my kids, like I said, man, I'm always gonna have that man in the back of my mind. Throughout this entire time, oh, good judge. supporters have had his back, and a lot of them don't look at him as a scammer nor a fraudster, probably because most people don't have sympathy for billion dollar corporations. Omi was stealing from corporations and giving their product to regular people for a fair price. He came from nothing in the streets of Philadelphia and built an empire. However, that empire wouldn't have existed if it wasn't for the people who created the demand in the first place. Omi knows what he did was wrong, Does and he, he has accepted money? that he needs to do the time to pay for what he did. Just a few weeks ago, he surrendered himself into prison. If we have any faith in the justice system, we just have to hope that Omi comes out a better and changed Oh no, man. he did do jail time. So oh, he's saying he could have got 15, but the judge only gave him five. I don't know, bro, I don't know. Like, that is, I knew, I see, you know, it's crazy, I remember seeing this dude, I'm like, no way, i like, what does he do? He he didn't, he only had like 800k subscribers when I seen him, like, I think I seen him probably at his peak, like, like, you know, he was just on my YouTube Explorer page or something, I might have been looking at cars and he popped up, I don't know, but, I'm like, no, ain't no way, bro, he got too many cars, I've, I've definitely seen this dude before, I was like, no way, bro, he has to be doing something illegal, something illegal, it's no way. But I don't know, man. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about the situation. Y'all think he should have got more time? Y'all think it was just enough amount of time? Y'all think he was a scammer or not? Y'all let me know what y'all thought. And as always, y'all must do If y'all enjoyed the video too, make sure you hit the comment button, like button, notify button, subscribe button, all buttons. Because guess what? <gasps> we gone.